You're five feet nothing, a hundred and nothing, and you got hardly a speck of athletic ability. And you hung in with the best college football team in the land for two years. You're a tough kid, Willie. But you give up on yourself way too easy. You're a good football player, too. I think you may even be great. And I'm gonna push you until we find out. Cross the line of scrimmage, I'm gonna take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember forever the night they played the Titans. Ever wonder which football movie reigns supreme? Well, get ready for the ultimate showdown. I'm launching a 64C tournament featuring the greatest gridiron classics of all time. From classic underdog stories to epic rivalries, I've got it all covered. It's time to settle the debate once and for all. Which football movie is the undisputed champion? I've carefully selected 64 iconic football movies to compete in this epic tournament. Each round, you, the fans, will vote on which film moves forward. The journey will be filled with upsets, comebacks, and unforgettable moments. Will Friday Night Lights dominate the competition? Can Remember the Titans overcome the odds? Or will a surprise contender emerge from the shadows? The fate of these legendary films rests in your hands. Stay tuned for our first round matchups and voting details get ready to cheer debate and ultimately determine which football movie reigns supreme it's going to be a wild ride let's get to it now in order to be fair i want to explain to you how i came up with the rankings that i did and how to go ahead and actually vote so you know what's going on and i'm going to go ahead and actually do a breakdown of each seed let me tell you what my rating criteria to the seeds for all these movies i've used rotten tomato scores for credits as one category I've also used IMDb and Rotten Tomato scores for audience scores as another criteria. I've also gone and actually included the original box office revenue and adjusted it to 2024's box office revenue. So I've gone and actually bridged gap of inflation to go and actually give everybody a fair shot at what they would have made in today's time frame. If they've been nominated or won an Oscar, that's also a criteria that blends into it. And then there's actually been a couple of football movies that have been preserved in the National Library for Congress that is preserved for posterity. And I think that is actually a category that I want to consider as well. So all of those things in the mix, and I come up with my own little algorithm to go ahead and actually see from one to 64. I actually started off with 85 movies, and it's every genre of movies in here. Whether well, you're talking about inspirational, comedy, family friendly, not so family friendly, documentaries, it doesn't matter if it goes from Pop Warner to high school, college, or pros, they're all against each other. If it's a football centric movie, it's in here and it's been considered. That's all my criteria of how I went actually to make the determinations. Now, I want to go and actually give you my rundown of the first round matchups. If you don't want the breakdown of the different seeds and you just want to go ahead and actually know about how to vote and the details on that, go ahead and actually skip to the timestamp down below. Either I'll have it on the screen here or it actually may be in the details. But go ahead and actually skip to that if you don't want to go ahead and actually get the breakdown. But I think some of you are going to want to watch this. But either way, if you like how this sounds, do me a favor, click that like, share, subscribe in there. But now let's break down those seedings. So here we have the 64 seed Air Bud Golden Receiver. So here I'm going to break down how everything breaks down so you can see the seeds on here. So we see the box office. I'll show what actually it got in that year that it was released. The adjusted box office for 2024. The golden number indicates where it places amongst the other 64 seeds. Rotten Tomato scores for critics and Rotten Tomato IMDb combined score for audiences. And you look at those percentages and you can go and actually determine of obviously the greater percentage is the more favorable it is. The lower is the lower end of it. So that's how everything breaks down. Let's go through these 64 seeds. So the number 64, Air Bud, released in 1998. You see here, there's nothing really spectacular about it. It is the number 64 seed for a reason. So that's your number 64. 63, we have Johnny B. Good with Anthony Michael Hall. Here you go and actually see everything on there, including, I want to pick out there, obviously, the critic score of 0%. That's how you have it as a 63%. Next, we have The Best of Times with Robin Williams and Kurt Russell, released in 1986. A modest box office hit, some very low scores there, but audiences a tad bit on the favorable side. Number 61 is Touchback. This was released in 2011, also with Kurt Russell. 
you see a very uh, low limited release for box office. Here you have critic score is pretty low, audience score is pretty high. Next seed is Fantasy Football. This is one of our first ones where it did not get a theatrical release, released in 2022. But we do actually have what the critics and audience scores have it. Audiences were generally favorable for this. That's how it comes up with the 60 seed. Number 59 is 23 Blast. Now, this is based off of a true story. You see the box office there with a 36% on the critics and 65% on the audience, getting that number 59 seed. For the 58 seed, two for the money with Al Pacino and Matthew McConaughey, released in 2005 with a box office there of 28%, or excuse me, at the 28 level, with the critics and audience score as you see there on the screen. 57 seed is The Long Shots with Ice Cube and Kiki Palmer, released in 2008. See a very modest box office score there with middling uh, critic sc scores as well as audience scores. Seating number 56, the fifth quarter 2011 release. And this one, you actually have a limited release and generally favorable reviews by both critics and audiences, but nothing too spectacular. Number 55 seat was the Slaughter Rule re release in 2002, starring Ryan Gosling. Very limited release, but here you go and actually see some very favorable critic scores and okay scores by the audience. Number 54 is Paterno. This is another one that was not released theatrically. Released in 2018 with Al Pacino. Here you go and actually see again, critic scores are up there at 71% and audiences kind of liked it as well. In 53, Everybody's All-American with Dennis Quaid released in 1988. A modest box office success with mid to slightly underwhelming scores there. The number 52 C is probably the most wide release thing that a lot of people will recognize. Wildcast with Goldie Hawn released in 1986. Here you see that it was in the top 20 as far as box office for 2024 adjusted. While the critics didn't like it, audiences are okay, mid-level on there. That's what we have for number 52 seat. Whereas in the 51 seat, we have When the Game Stands Tall, released in 2014 with Jim Cavazo and Michael Chiklis. This was actually a middle, middling, probably a little bit lower than that box office uh, delivery. Critics only 20%, but audiences really did like this at 69%. Number 50, Necessary Roughness, released in 1991 with Scott Bakula and Sinbad. You see here the box office is up there. Critics didn't like this one. And again, audiences mm, generally okay with it. Number 49, Leatherheads with George Clooney and Renee, Renee Zellweger. This was released in 2008. It's a throwback type of football movie. Middling box office success and middling critic scores. So that's how it comes up to a 49 seat. In 48, we have Facing the Giants. Now, this actually has middling box office scores on here, but here you see a very vast discrepancy between what the critics rated and what audiences gave it. So audience really were favorable, and that kicked it up to the 48th seed. And the 47th seed, Run the Race. Now, this released in 2018, so very limited release as far as box office. But again, you see a disparity between what the critics rated it and what audiences rate this to go and actually get that 47th seed. The 46th seed, we have My All America with Aaron Eckhart. This released in 2015 with a limited release. Here again, vast discrepancy between what the critics rated it and the audiences have it, but having that high audience score is getting it up to a number 46 seed. Number 45, another movie that I'm sure a lot of folks have actually seen, Little Giants, starring Rick Moranis and Ed O'Neill, released in 1994 with a box office that was pretty okay back in the day. Again, critics not that in love with this. Audiences, I think you're gonna have a lot of folks that go ahead and actually remember this from their childhood. 44 seed is National Champions, released in 2021. Now this has J.K. Simmons with a limited release. The interesting thing on here is that now you're going to actually seeing both critics and audiences give it a generally favorable score. And that's how it ups up to the number 44 seed. Number 43 is all the right moves with Tom Cruise. Now take a look at the box office was pretty decent on this one, getting it to 25th place. Critics actually generally like this, while audiences, oddly enough, did not like it. So here we have one that's going to actually slip in at 43 of middling success. 42, Monday Night Mayhem. Now this was one that was actually released way back when in 2002 as a non-theatrical release. So you look at the critic scores and the audience scores, generally pretty favorable that people like this one. That's why it gets the number 42 seed. Number 41, definitely a big one for folks. The Longest Yard starring 
Adam Sandler that was released in 2005, a remake of The Longest Yard from 1974, I believe. As you can see, this is a box office smash where it is in the top five. Critics not loving it, but audiences in general pretty much like this movie. So this is probably going to be one that a lot of folks are going to have popularity with. And number 40 seed is Draft Day with Kevin Costner. Now released in 2014, this is a movie that was heavily pushed by the NFL itself. As you can see, the box office was eh, it was meh. Uh, but if you look at the critics and audiences, generally pretty favorable. So it goes and actually gets you number 40 seed here. 39 is The Game Plan with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Released in 2007 when Dwayne was a likable, bankable character. He's coming up in the movie scene. And as you can see, the box office draw was there for him at number eight. However, critics were not a fan of this and audiences were okay with it at 66%. The 38th seed, one that is also a cult classic, is The Replacements with Keanu Reeves and Gene Hackman, released in 2000. Now, as you can see, it's in the top 15 as far as box office draw. Critics, again, don't like it. Probably wasn't their forte, but audiences on general really like this one. And I think this, is, uh, this has a chance to go and actually sneak and get by in a couple of different rounds. Number 37 is School Ties. So this has Brendan Fraser in it, and it was released in 1992. Box office wasn't too big on this, but both critics and audiences have a favorable rating on this. And this may be a sleeper hit. Who knows? 36 C. I know plenty of people love this movie, The Waterboy with Adam Sandler, released in 1998 with a box office adjusted for inflation at number four overall. Rotten score, tomato, Rotten Tomato scores have critics hate this, but plenty of people love Waterboy, and that audience score reflects how much people love that. Waterboy has a chance to go ahead and actually be uh, one of those top finalists. 35th Seed is another straight to stream, and that is Disney's Safety, released in 2020. Critics and audiences here, you can see, gave it really favorable scores. This is a movie I haven't seen personally, but I think based off of these scores, I might have to give it a watch. 34 Seed is The Express, the Ernie Davis story, released in 2008, starring Dennis Quaid. Modest box office returns, but when you look at the critics and the audiences, this seems to be a movie that a lot of people go ahead and actually tout as a very good movie. This could be a sleeper as well. Number 33 is Go Tigers, released in 2001 as a documentary, and we have a limited release, but that critic score cannot be ignored. At 85% and audiences at 70%, that gets this one way up there. Now we're at the top 32. 32 is The Program, uh, released in 1993, starring James Caan, Holly Berry, and a bunch of other people coming up. While the box office wasn't anything to go ahead and actually write home about, we actually have critics that really hated that movie or just didn't really understand it or like it, but audiences love that. And I'm actually one of the people that really like this one. This is a really awesome movie, but the program could go and actually go all the way. Number 31, released in 1986, Lucas with Corey Haim, uh, Charlie Sheen, and a lot of other folks just coming up in the mid eighties. Box office wasn't anything really to go ahead and actually be spectacular, but both critics and audiences have favorable scores on this. And that's how it goes and actually bumps all the way up to number 31. 30 seed is Radio, starring Cuba Gooding Jr. and Ed Harris, released in 2003. Box office was in the top 20, so you can't sneeze at that. Critics hated this movie, obviously, but audiences seem to be favorable to it, so that'll go ahead and actually get it up to the 30 seed. 29, Newt Rockney, All American, released in 1940. Couldn't find a box office for this at all. But there's two big things on here that boost this up to be uh, number 29C, because I know this will be controversial, is that audiences decently liked it at 63%. Critics love this as an 88%, and it's actually in the Library of Congress. And that's going to be big because that means it's safe for posterity. This is a lot having to do with it actually having uh, Ronald Reagan as an actor. So number 29C here. 28 seed is Woodlawn. This was released in 2015. Box office suggested nothing really to go ahead and actually be spectacular or anything like that. But take a look at those critics and audiences scores. A lot of people love this. At a 73 and 72%, this is probably one of those movies that a lot of us should go ahead and actually see. And it's going to actually obtain the number 28 seed. Number 27 is Varsity Blues, released in 1999 with James Vanderbleek, uh, John Voigt, and a bunch of other young stars way back in the day. 
adjusted for inflation. This is 14th on the place, so it definitely was a box office success. Critics not so much in favor of this, but audiences give it a pretty good score, and it has a number 27 seed. And number 26 in 1991 comes The Last Boy Scout with Bruce Willis and Damon Wayans. It was actually just outside of the top 10 as far as the box office. Critics were kind of like mid on this, but I can tell you this is a cult classic now. I love this movie, and it's, it's one of those movies that could go ahead and actually be uh, one of my finalists, like in the top eight for me. Number 25 is 80 for Brady released just a year ago starring some legends of lily tomlin jane fonda rita moreno and sally field now box office it was okay nothing too too great or anything like that but critics were generally favorable to it and audiences actually have it as a 74 percent meaning that folks actually kind of got drawn to it number 24 released in 1977 semi-tough with burt reynolds and chris christopherson now you look at this box office, we're inside the top 10 on this one with $193 million adjusted. And this is a weird dynamic where we actually have critics that love this and audiences not so favorable to it. But that, uh, that box office and critic score gets it up to the 24 seed. 23 seed is Against All Odds. Now this was released in 1984. I had never heard of this, but has a top 20 of just for box office score. And you go ahead and actually look at critics and audiences are generally favorable for it. This is the first one that we actually see a Oscar nomination for it. And that's how it goes and actually gets you that 23 seat. 22 is Greater, released in 2016, a movie that is based on a walk-on and is an inspirational story. Nothing to go and actually shout too much about as far as the box office draw, but if you look at both the critics and the audiences, both loved it, and that really elevated this to the 22 seed. 21 seed is 12 Mighty Orphans, released in 2021, starring Luke Wilson. A very limited release for the box office there, but looking at the critic scores at 63%, and audiences really love this at 81%. This is one of the highest rated in the audience scores, and it's going to actually give you a number 21 seat in our tournament. Number 20 is Concussion with Will Smith, released in 2015. Has an okay box office uh, pull there, but what we're looking at here is that critics are generally okay with this movie audiences seem to really like this and it all those things factors into it getting to the number 20 seat number 19 the gridiron gang with dwayne the rock johnson released in 2006 box office was okay a little bit in the mid on here but here we have a discrepancy again between critics and audiences critics in general really didn't like this movie probably thought it was kind of bland or what have you but audiences loved it at a 76%, and therefore it goes and actually gets into our top 20. Number 18, Brian Banks. This is based off of a true story, and it was released in 2018, and it stars uh, Algis Hodges, which is a, a phenomenal actor. Now, it has a limited release, so not much in the box office, but as you can see by the scores, critics are generally favored for it, and audiences really loved this movie. That's how it goes and actually jumps all the way up to our number 18 seed. Number 17, probably one of the movies that's probably going to be favorite to go all the way. I wonder why it's ranked this low. Let me break it down for you. Released in 1999, starring Al Pacino, Dennis Quaid, and a host of other folks on here. Box Office gets it in the top 10. I'm sure a lot of people are surprised that it didn't, didn't make more money based off of where it's at. Obviously, it goes ahead and actually has a huge box office draw. Critics, not surprisingly, were kind of in the middle of the road for it, but audiences loved it at 71%. Therefore, it gets the number 17 seed. I know that this is going to be a favorite to go all the way. Number 16 seed. This is a surprising one. Never heard of this before. Harvard Beats Yale. Released in 2008. It was a limited release. So we have limited box office. But looking at the critics, love this story at a 92% for critics. And audiences generally favor too at being over 70% for audiences. So when you look at both of those on there, this probably has a... a this is probably a movie that a lot of us probably have not seen, but maybe should probably go and actually give it a look. Number 15, we have We Are Marshall, starring Matthew McConaughey. Now, this was released in 2006, and this one actually has you inside your top 10 as far as box office. Critics generally didn't like this. Audiences love this, considering the subject matter of talking about a team that was basically lost, that uh, perished or what have you. This is one where you really have 
a uh, very inspirational story. So I can see this one being another sleeper hit as well. Number 14, for those of us that are, you know, under the age of like 70, may not have seen. But 1932, the Marx Brothers went and actually put out horse feathers. And you can see, not much information on that box office. That might not even be as accurate as it probably should be, but that's all I could find for it. But look at the scores on there. A 97% on Rotten Tomatoes for the critics and an 80% combined Rotten, Rotten Scores and IMDb gives that up there where it's a high level comedy. Might be something to look into for everybody. Number 13 is Invincible with Mark Wahlberg, released in 2006. Box office of 91 mil. And we have critics and audiences both giving it a pretty favorable rating on here. This is one that should not be slept on. Number 12, a lot of people will go ahead and actually vibe with this. Brian's song starring James Conn and Billy D. Williams, released in 1971. This was a made for a TV movie, but phenomenal. If you didn't tear up a little bit at this movie, probably something wrong with you as a human being. Has 85% on Rotten Tomatoes for critics and audiences loved it as well, just missing on that 80% mark. It actually had a Golden Globes nomination and is generally thought of as one of the most inspirational football movies ever. Number 11, American Underdog starring Zachary Levi. Released in 2021, it's a story about Kurt Warner, and it had like meh, middle level uh, box office draw, but both critics at a 76% and the combined Rotten Tomato and IMBD scores have it as an 84%. Probably means that some of us probably should give this movie a watch to go ahead and actually really figure out how good this movie is. Now, let's get into our top 10 and see who actually might go ahead and actually bring this on home. Number 10 is Dal North Dallas 40, released in 1979 with a box office of 112 mil adjusted for 2024. Critics loved this at 85%, while audiences, not as much as critics loved it, but still had a general favorable rating, 70%. This is how this got into the top 10 for us. Number nine is Rudy. Again, another favorite of mainstream and probably is one of the favorites to get on in there. Uh, released in 1993, Box office wasn't actually that big. This would be, actually become a cult classic over the years, what have you. But critics obviously love this at 78%. And audiences, I know everybody uh, likes Rudy when they go and actually watch it. This is definitely a favorite to go ahead and actually go all the way. Number eight, undefeated documentary that was released in 2011. Now, documentaries have limited box office success, but look at both the critics and audience scores for this at a 96 percent for critics and 83 percent for audiences both critics and audiences love this documentary so much so that it got so much so that it got four nominations for oscars and actually won for best documentary so this is probably a movie that we probably all as a collective group need to watch undefeated number seven the longest yard with burt reynolds released in 1974 Box office smash, giving it a number six adjusted for the inflation, and it has generally good reviews. Now, it's not as high as some of these other ones that are in like the uh, high 70s or in the 80%, but still, people like this movie and critics did as well, and it got an Oscar nomination. So that's how we go and actually get a number seven on this one. What's number six, you say? Friday Night Lights. Plenty of people have loved this movie. Probably another favorite to go and actually go all the way. Released in 2004, has a box office uh, adjusted for inflation, places around about 13. So probably not as high as I thought it would be, but still uh, pretty, uh, a lot of people went to see this. Critics have it at 82% and audiences love this at 78%. And it goes and actually has earned the top six seed. Now we're going to the top five. The Freshman starring Harry Lloyd. Released in 1925, I know a lot of you will be like, what the heck? How does a movie from 1925 get in here? Well, first and foremost, when you adjust for inflation, this actually went in and actually priced pretty decently just to get 29th on the place, as well as look at that critic score at 95%. And even audiences mostly liked it at 75%. So it's got a lot of cachet to it. And this is another one. It's the second one that is preserved in the Library of Congress. It, had, it, it deserves its place on here. So it is number five. I understand some of you might have some qualms with it, but I rate it and I go ahead and actually I'm objective about it. But that's what we have is number five. Number four, 
Remember the Titans with Denzel Washington released in 2000. I know this is probably a lot of people's uh, pick to go ahead and actually go all the way. Box office actually has it at number seven all time and critics have it as a 71% and audiences love this inspirational tale at 85%. This is definitely one of the favorites to go ahead and actually go all the way. All right, let's look at the top three. Number three, Heaven Can Wait. Released in 1978, I personally have never seen this movie, but a lot of people in 1978 did so much so that if you go and actually adjust for inflation, this would have this would earn today 393 million dollars. Uh, so at this point, I mean, you can't deny that. Plus, critics loved it at 86 percent. Had a lot of a uh, lot of uh, good things to say about it, and audiences in generally go and actually give it a nice one at 69 percent. Nice. Um, and let's just be real nine oscar nominations with a win it's nothing to sneeze at you have to go and actually appreciate something like this so heaven can wait go and actually get our number three seed number two the blind side with sandra bullock now, i know a lot of people will go and actually say because of the controversy that's happened after that and what's happened with uh that family and and all that kind of things like that but remember this is taken in that time of 2009 when it came out and it doesn't diminish what this movie is uh First of all, it's a box office smash. It's the second highest grossing one adjusted for inflation that we have on this list. And both critics and audiences love this. Don't go ahead and actually change anything about the movie now. Go ahead and actually have revisionist history. People loved it then. It's a very inspirational movie as written. And it actually had three nominations, including getting Sandra Bullock the Oscar win as Best Actress. So we take all into that into account. This movie goes and actually gets number two seed. Jerry Maguire released in 1996 starring tom cruise this one has first of all the number one box office draw by far critics loved it at 84 percent and even audiences at a 76 percent gave it a pretty good review and you're looking at five oscar nominations with an oscar win so you take all of that and combined and this is how jerry Maguire grabs the number one seed for the football tournament Fight amongst yourselves as far as the seating, but that's the way it's going to go and actually work. And now let me give you some details on how you can go and actually vote and what we're going to go and actually do going forward. And now the voting details. So how do you go and actually vote for this tournament? You got to go ahead and actually join Facebook to go ahead and actually vote. I know for some of you folks, especially if you're Gen Z, you don't even want to hear that. Probably a lot of uh, millennials and Gen Xers don't want to hear it either, but right now is the best way i can go ahead and actually do this tournament if this blows up i'll find a better way to go ahead and actually do this but for now you're going to go and actually join this facebook group that i'll either go ahead and actually have right here or it's going to be below in the description and what's going to go ahead and actually happen is each round is going to be up for a week to vote it's going to go ahead and actually start on sundays and the voting is going to continue all the way through saturday to go ahead and actually do each round so then i will go and actually make sure that that group is updated so you'll know exactly what seeds advance, who actually won, all that kind of good stuff. And you'll be able to go and actually vote for the next week's, the next week's combatants. Okay. Um, if you go ahead and actually everything, once I go and actually get the votes tallied up, go and actually move forward. If there is a tie happening, if I don't, you know, if I don't have a whole lot of people, it's probably going to be some ties in there. If that's the case on there, then the higher seed will go ahead and actually advance. It's just the rules that I'm doing on here. I will if we this really blows up and you guys really like that, I'll figure out a way to do it better. But for right now, that's what I want to do because I'm excited about it. I really want to do this. Um, the face page will always Facebook page will always be updated. I am also going to be looking at trying to go ahead and actually get videos that will update with the new rounds and kind of looking at the new competitors, all that kind of good stuff, just to kind of keep everybody updated and coming on back here. Uh, you can go and actually look for information on the Facebook page and all that kind of good stuff. But that's it. That's what we're gonna go ahead and actually do until we go ahead and actually get one grid iron great. So I hope you're excited. I know that you're pumped. Um, and we're going to go ahead and actually get ready for some football. So watch, debate, vote, repeat. Keep it going until we go ahead and actually get that winner. And if you like this, again, subscribe. Go ahead and actually like this. Share it out there where people will have you. And if you really want to go ahead and actually do this, go ahead and actually make sure you vote on here um, and join the channel so I can grow my channel and see if you guys want more of these. Took a lot of work, but I enjoyed it. This was fun. So until the next time, go out there, be great, vote. And uh, I look forward to seeing y'all out there. Peace.